Welcome, my name is Bob, uh, better known as BAR549. That's BAR549, as in bar. Um, that's my initials. Uh, I'm known on the uh, Skidoo, uh, skidootalk.com. It's the world's largest Skidoo website. Um, if you haven't been on there, you may want to look it up. Uh, if you're a Skidoo guy, uh, there's a lot of information, a lot of helpful people on there. Um, so I'd highly recommend it. You can find me on there um, in the excess section uh, under 1200s, uh, the four stroke, and in the subsection 900 uh, Ace. And I've got a build thread in there. It's the 216 Blizzard 900 NA. And uh, I've taken that sled from a 90 horsepower sled to 111 plus horsepower, somewhere about 115 currently. Uh, we've done, there's dyno runs there, there's photos, it's a pretty extensive build thread. Um, and a lot of guys have found it very useful. The reason I did the thread is that nobody was doing a 900 build. And uh, the 900 is just an excellent trail engine. Uh, by far, I, I personally feel it's the best trail engine out there in combination that uh, BRP's done. Uh, and uh, their turbo, that's a nice, nice combo too. In fact, uh, it's a very, very popular sled. But um, anyhow, uh, we're going to have four episodes. Uh, one on the teardown of the primary. Uh, and then uh, the second one will be the reassembly of it. Uh, the third episode will be the teardown of the QRS short shaft secondary, and then the fourth episode will be the reassembly of it and setting it. Uh, along the way, there'll be trips, or, uh, tips and information uh, given to you. Uh, if you have any questions or whatever, uh, uh, feel free to contact me on DoTalk. It's going to be the best way to get a hold of me on there. Message me. I'm on there every day uh, on that. Um, uh, part of the reason uh, I say I'm doing this is I've had a lot of requests to do it and there's not a whole lot out there on the E-Drive 2, especially since um, the abundance of tuning parts available for them now. Uh, when they first started out, the PB80 was very popular, uh, but uh, that's not uh, uh, the case now. Uh, the E-Drive, a lot of people have found out now that with the new tuning parts available, it's a very durable, very tunable, very cool running, consistent clutch. Uh, some people like the PB80 because you throw some weights in it, adjust them, and away you go. But it does run hot. It's a good clutch, but I totally believe the E-Drive 2 is better. Um, and especially with the addition of parts. It wasn't popular in the beginning because there wasn't a lot of tuning parts available, but now there is, from ramps to um, springs uh, to the O-rings, just a lot of things that make it very durable and very tunable and low maintenance. Once a year, take it apart, clean it, recheck it, put it back together, and away you go. So I do want to give a shout out to uh, Chris from CNT Performance. Uh, he does not sponsor me. I do not have any sponsors, but I use his clutch tools. Uh, I've got pretty much all of them uh, for the uh, E-Drive and the uh, P-Drive and QRS. Uh, they work very well and they're high quality. I'm going to pull put up the business card for him so you can see it. And uh, just uh, contact Chris at the number on the card and tell him I sent you. Um, he'll know who I am. Uh, he's a very good guy to deal with. Customer service is second to none and you can't go wrong dealing with him. He has a lot of different tools. He has a lot of parts available. Uh, things like that. So, uh, so give him a shout. I'm going to adjust the camera and I'm going to take this clutch apart for you and show what we have. So I'm moving the camera down so I can get a better shot and hopefully you can see it uh, when I'm doing what I need to do here for you. So first off what you want to do is find the factory marks because it's important to keep the balance together. Now they're usually just a little, let's see if I can wipe this off, 
it's hard to see but there's a little mark right there little laser mark uh, and you'll find one on the top too well I highlight them uh, with a marker um, so when I go put this back together I can get them lined up there's not one here so I did prick punch this with a punch and a hammer and I do have that marked so I can get that back together and we'll also do the same thing with the cover in there too so meantime uh, let me double check the camera again like I say this is my first time doing this and I want to make sure it's working Yep, it's still working, so I was supposed to have somebody help me, but they canceled out at the last minute, so you want to put your hand in here, get it down low on the table, um, and then you're just going to whap it hard to get it apart. Second hammer on that did it. Now, something I forgot to mention was um, you're going to need the puller, like this one here. Uh, you can get from Chris, or I might not pull her, but hold her for the primary when you take it off the sled. And then you're going to need a clutch puller bolt. Now some do the water method. Um, I've always used uh, the bolt method here, like this bolt puller here. But I'm going to give you a couple tips. A lot of these bolts end up getting broken, and I believe it's due to... Uh, the lack of lubrication. They gall up. I've tried, I've had some clutches I've taken apart and didn't think I was going to get them apart because the threads were all galled up in the clutch. And so that's from the high loads that this bolt sees in there when you're popping it off. So I always put a thin coating of anti-seize on the threads and especially on the tip where it bottoms out in the crank. I've yet to break a bolt uh, puller by doing that. I believe that's key to doing that and um, uh, so I, I'd highly advise that and I, it works very well. Although some do the water method and that works well also So on that. Um, okay, so now uh, we've, we've popped these apart and I'll find the marks here and this will just slip up off of there. And you can see he's had some issues here with a little bit of belt slippage and things like that. And we're gonna we're gonna cure that, okay? And uh, and we'll be cleaning this up also. So and then uh, this um, I'm gonna take this one off. It just pulls up, and I've got a couple different clutches here. And I'll pop this up. I'm going to set that to the aside for right now. And the arms are in excellent condition in there and things like that. Now you're going to want to uh, take these bolts. Uh, let me back up a little bit. We're going to uh, mark this. I already did. You can see right here that I've prick punched it and marked it with red to match that line because this doesn't come marked from the factory. These bolts here they're T, T30s, and you can take them out. I break them loose first. A couple things with those. You want to make sure you get in there and you clean out. Uh, sometimes they got some paint markings. You want to clean that out so that fully seats in there because they're in there tight. Now, if you can't get them loose by hand, you can use a little bit of heat with a propane and uh, heat it down in here, butane I should say, heat it down in there and it should break it loose. If not, another procedure I've done that's worked well is you can come straight down, let me get a bolt here I've got from another clutch I've got apart. You can come great right down and hit straight down on top of this bolt. Hit straight down on it and then come in at an angle once you got a nice little hit in it and I should be it this way, hit it this way to knock it loose and it will break it loose. Um, some of those are in there pretty tight, so um, on that. So I'm going to set this aside because I got another clutch I took apart earlier and I'm going to show you what I got here. The camera wasn't working correctly earlier, so I don't know if it's my fault or what, but. Uh, 
Anyhow, um, just wanted to speed things along here. Now I did take one of the arms out to show you what we have here. Um, you're going to have, I'll put it on the white background here so you can see a little better. You're going to have two washers, the arm, the nut, and the bolt. Uh, and it's an 8 millimeter nut and the bolt Torx is a number 25 uh, for the head of that bolt. Now to get back to these ramps, in 216, Dew uh, came out with a new ramp. Weight, arm, whatever you want to call it. And there's numbers on both sides, okay? But the 249 arm, or 749, I'm sorry, 749 is the arm you want for tuning for either the 900 or the 1200. And you're going to want to move weight from the end of this arm, and we'll show you that in the second video, what we've done here. Now these arms from the factory, I found them to be as much as almost a full gram difference between um, the clutches. And uh, so if anything, you want to bounce them uh, to get them up even, all six of them the same way. So anyhow, um, the, um, but I'll be back up here in a little bit when I I'll get this, but you put your compressor on there, uh, you're going to get these bolts out, and then what comes out of there is you got your little shim right there, your spacer for seating um, on your secondary here. And... It does fit right there and then you've got your primary spring and you've got your um, a little top piece here it's got a bushing in it and this bushing is in excellent condition I can tell by just looking at it but we're going to measure it to make sure it is is good but uh, I'm going to put the other clutch back up here that I have just to show you the um, um, set up to compress that. Now again these are CNT tools from Chris at uh, CNT Power Sports. Um, this piece here I made but it does come with a with a piece for that and all you're going to want to do is thread this down on there and I apologize for going a little backwards here but I thought I was videoing earlier and um, was not and for whatever reason so um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here but you just compress that down just like that and then you take these screws take these screws out and then you're just going to unscrew this okay and then what you're going to end up with is like I was showing you earlier you're going to have these pieces and just take them out. Now what we need to do now uh, is we need to clean this clutch assembly up um, on there but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do some measurements and uh, make sure that this clutch is good. Um, you can measure them a lot of different ways. Some guys do them a little different than everybody but um, I'm just going to show it the way I do it. Uh, got my tools over here okay now I've yet to see a variance in these shafts here where the bushings ride uh, but uh, you're always going to want to check them and see where you're at um, 571 and a half And 125, well, I'll take that back. One, two, six, four. Okay. So, what we want to do is I use a snap gauge. Get my right one here. And I'm going to go down in and measure the bushing in the bottom of this. And um, 
I could do it with a caliper down in there but I like to do it this way to make sure to see what I have and your clearance uh, wear limit is ten thousandths max you're gonna find in the area if you put a new one in it, it's gonna be about five thousandths clearance um, so um, let's say if you get in the neighborhood of ten thousandths, you're going to want to look into replacing that bushing. I made a tool to replace that bushing. It's not that difficult uh, on there. So right now we're at six and a half thousandths, six and a half thousandths on that measurement. So we're good to go there on that bushing. Okay. So let's check uh, check the one in the in the top piece here is spring cup holder here oh I'm gonna get my other one I thought I had the other one I needed but this one's gonna have to be in here okay here we go okay let's see what we got We're at uh, seven and a half thousandths clearance there, so we're good. Um, you can get another season out of that without a problem. So, um, but if you want to replace this piece here, you have to buy the assembly. They no longer offer the bushing for this. So that's something, uh, if it does get worn, uh, you're going to have to replace that. And they're not that expensive. Uh, I can't remember the price right off right now, but I do know they're not that expensive. But I don't think you'd ever see this part wear out um, because of the design of the bushing. Uh, this is a hardened uh, and also unless the bushing failed and then it got metal to metal and wore it and I have yet to see one not say that they don't but um, anyhow uh, still fits nice on there. So uh, the other thing you're going to want to measure is your uh, little pucks. Um, that uh, there's six of them and the minimum measurement on that uh, is a hundred and fifty thousandths min uh, this one right here is a hundred and fifty seven thousandths um, got another one a 157 and let's see what we got here another one at 157 so his are in real good shape uh, in fact I um, I built this clutch last year um, and um, uh, from those pucks there and they've held up well so it's just a matter of keeping them clean and, and going from there so but let me get the video camera moved again okay sorry about moving the camera and walking around but uh, it's the best I can do without help uh, but uh, Anyhow, that's going to be the end of the episode one. Sorry about the going back and forth, but uh, got to do what you got to do. Uh, so, but uh, thank you. And uh, like I say, get on Do Talk, best site in the world, right there for Skidoo snowmobiles. They do talk about other sleds a little bit, but not much. Uh, but uh, Skidoo Talk, if you have a Skidoo, lots of great guys on there to help you out. So, BAR549 signing off. And we'll see you for episode two. Thank you.